This is Jenny McGee. And Jenny, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, hello, hello. I'm Jenny, and I am a mama of two kiddos and a full-time artist. I create a lot of custom paintings for people's homes, for people's businesses, and I'm also a course creator that um, teaches other artists how to make a living with their art, specifically paintings. Oh, that's awesome. So is, how long have you um, been, do, how long have you been able to support yourself as a full-time artist kind of out on your own? And can you tell me a little bit where, how your journey led you to that place? Yeah. So I start, I, well, I consider it my formal start because that was when I made my business in LLC was in 2010. Oh, cool. And um, so I, new things had to get a little bit more formalized because before 2010, I knew I wanted to be a painter. I dabbled in art. I loved creating work and would sell it here and there. But my main job was a graphic designer at that time. So I didn't quite take it seriously until 2010. I was like, okay, (laughs) I knew I didn't want to be a graphic designer anymore. I knew painting had my heart creating art was my passion and I just needed to try it. Plus I had a pretty major health crisis at that time that, um, was that, you know, that fire yeah. <laughs> under my, you know, what yeah. to get things moving in and, and grooving, uh, to follow my heart and my passion. So, um, 2010 is when I I opened up a small studio in the town I was living in, in Columbia, Missouri, and I started to create pieces and paintings um, that utilized a ton of texture because I'm a real like textury person. I love it when you create something that you literally just want to touch. So I... um, loved putting a ton of texture and colors together and painting trees. So trees were kind of the very first subject matter. Um, when I opened my business that represented something very particular for me and something very important. Um, when they were, trees were the symbol, um, as I was getting healthy again, as I was going through a health crisis, trees became a symbol of strength for me. And, um, all of a sudden, like I started painting these trees and people were like really resonating with them and really loving the, uh, the content of them. And one of my favorite quotes at that time was, um, the secret to the life of a tree is that it remains rooted in something other and deeper than itself. And I I think like, (laughs) thanks. Well, and I think that no matter where you're at in your life or your your life journey, you know, we all have different hardships that we face. And um, oftentimes we recognize through those hard times and those difficulties that we just don't get through them by ourselves, right? We oftentimes are shown something so much greater, whether it's our community, our friends, our family, our, our God that shows up in our life. So as I was painting these trees, they started selling like crazy. And then I was like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm on to something. <laughs> I got to be in business. <laughs> yeah. I have to make this formal. So that was my, um, my first formal opening as a, as a full-time artist. So was that a gradual process or was it like, it kind of took off and then you were just like, I am done with being a graphic designer. This is what I want to do. Like, I know for sure. It was a, it was definitely a a gradual process for sure. I knew I wanted to study graphic design because it was like, it was almost like I was like studying it to be my backup plan. Like I, I knew that I could get a job as a graphic designer anywhere and it was my safety net, but really that deep down longing and passion I had was to be a painter. So I was playing it safe, which isn't a bad thing, you know, like I think that that's sometimes what we need to do in order to have like be in a place place of strength when the timing is right for us so I worked as a graphic designer for many years um after grad after I graduated with that degree um maybe like 
I would say for eight, nine years, I can't remember exactly, but around eight or nine years. And, um, yeah, really wasn't until that kind of pivotal moment when I had that health crisis that it was like, okay, it's now or never. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Back to your original question though. It's, it was a process definitely to lead to where I'm at today, getting to follow my heart and passion. So do you have any formal training like in painting or is that something that you kind of did alongside your graphic design cl- like classes and stuff or is is it just total hobby that turned into this? Well, um that's a great question. I primarily studied graphic design, but I had about a year where I could take um drawing classes and a couple painting classes. Um so I did get to dabble in fine art in my college experience. Mm -hmm. And then when my husband and I moved out of country to a country called El Salvador, I was able to connect with a group of Salvadoran artists who many of them taught classes. So I was able to take a couple printmaking classes and and, um, really jump into opportunities living in Central America, learning from Central American artists. Wow. That's amazing. So would you say that that has had an impact on kind of your style or is it just kind of the technique that you've integrated or is there anything that you specifically learned in El Salvador that you are now still doing today? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the textures of Central America spoke really strongly to me. The the whole culture is so textural. You know, you look at buildings and you see layer after layer and and get to that like um, Adobe layer that has been like painted over every decade, you know, and you see that on the infrastructure and architecture and buildings. And then um, the, the texture of the environment was so fascinating to me. So fascinating that I started to collect like trash from the environment down there um and incorporated it, trash in different interesting chip bags and candy wrappers and water bottle labels and started integrating that into my art as well as like um sugar cane pulp sugar cane is a um bulk produce down there and oftentimes you see these big piles of the the pulp just stacked up and uh that that fascinated me to add that into my art. So definitely a big yes to, to answer your question. The, the experience living abroad in that region was influential, I think, in why I love to add so much texture and texture layers. Texture the tactile. And yeah. That's awesome. That's interesting. So what is the strangest thing that you've ever integrated into one of your paintings as far as like, as far <laughs> as texture goes? <laughs> The strangest thing. Well, um, mud, I, the mud and clay in El Salvador is like this incredible, like rich red mud. And so I would oftentimes like, we'd go to a community and just dig and dig and dig. And I don't know if that is counts as the strangest, but certainly, um, was one of the messiest (laughs) was to add like a lot of clay into a painting before. That's awesome. So I was just on your Instagram and I saw um, a recent tree that you just did. Um, It looks like for an older couple and it was just really beautiful. So um, what is one of like your favorite projects that you've done or one that has like been so memorable that it's just like, I did this custom work and it's like, I will never forget this family or person or something like that. Oh, (laughs) <laughs> I think there's been many, it, it, I feel fortunate to say that there's been many and I, I can't think of one like in particular that stands out as my favorite because I love them each and every single one, um, as their unique experiences. Um, I think when I get the opportunity to work with the people who commission or Um, hire me to create a piece of art and I invite them to be a part of it. And they literally put their hands in the texture. The very first layer, the very beginning of my painting starts with um, texture. Mm -hmm. And so 
when they come and imprint their physical like handprints and start the painting themselves is one of my very favorite experiences to see. Um, I worked with before the tree painting um, a very similar process with a, fr a family family friends and they've just been near and dear to our hearts and their their son um, has been in a wheelchair and has had multiple, physical challenge his whole life and to see him get out of his wheelchair and start to paint with his hands and start and initiate this painting um with his whole family <laughs> just, oh, <laughs> with his mom and with his dad and with his brother other brother and sister just like it makes my heart explode because they not only have you know a piece of art artwork for you know their home in a particular place in their home but they've got a piece of family history you know they've got their family's handprints like in um you know paint strokes yeah. on a piece that can represent a legacy for them that's really cool how long do your um, pieces take to make um they take, it, it really depends on the size. For example, that piece, the family um, that I was sharing about, it took probably about 40, 50 hours and probably the span of, of two months because there's a lot of coordinating of times and schedules to get, hmm. to get everybody here. And I really want to make sure that the color is right. The dimension, the size is right. And so sometimes that takes a couple meetings before the actual painting is started to nail down. But in terms of my creation process, it's anywhere between 30 hours to 50 hours for like a, a four foot by four foot painting or four, five foot, five, five by five. Gotcha. But I also create little ones too. And like it, <laughs> those go a lot faster. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so what is one thing, you know, it's hard, you know, you said that the graphic design was kind of your backup plan and I know the, the safety net, the, the a regular full-time paycheck coming into your, you know, into your bank every two weeks. So what is it that you had to learn in order to be able to take that leap, um, knowing that this is what your heart called you to do, but you know, there's always that financial consideration we have to consider. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I first had to trust myself. I had to work on trusting myself and trusting that I have these passions and I've got this desire for a reason. Yeah. And um, so that was step one. Step two was then digging and researching the heck out of other artists that are making it work. So, I mean, I think in any industry, finding that person or that people or that, you know, example who is where you want to be and researching their process. Maybe they teach their process, but finding an example of somebody who is doing what you want to do, I think is a really great motivator to one, recognize that it's possible and two, that they're can be support out there for you. You're not doing it. You're not alone. Yeah. So that was my second step after trusting and believing that I have these, these thoughts, this passion, this, this desire to try something a little bit scary. <laughs> right. And, um, but, but, um, which we both know you can sum up in a sentence of like, Oh, I had to learn to trust myself, but like, that's a whole journey. <laughs> in and of itself, <laughs> Right. I mean, just the, the work that comes along with that. And so very yes, <laughs> lots, of, lots of internal work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tr starting with that, you know, Hey, I, I know that I, I have been given these desires and these, um, these feelings for a reason. And then finding that, that other example, that other person in, in, in your industry. So in the art industry, for me, it was finding an art coach. And I worked for an, with an art coach for six months, six to eight months. And she helped me know that, you know, just kind of start to debunk the starving artist myth, you know, like it's, it's, 
just a myth. It's, it's something that like, I had to start questioning my beliefs around, um, can't like, can artists actually make money? And, um, like, do, do I have, did I have to go to art school to make this work? Did I have, do I have, did I have to go to business school to make this work? Like starting to question, um, those doubts that sometimes can hold us back. That was part of my process question and then come up with a rebuttal, like, okay, the exact opposite of my disbelief. I came up with a belief, a new belief. Right. So so as in, I have this belief that there, you know, if you're going to be an artist, you've got to be a starving artist. And so then finding those examples of, Hey, here's 18 examples of why that does not have to be true. So I, yeah, that is, that's really great work for anybody that is trying to do I mean, anything, (laughs) I mean, it just goes back to all areas of your life, you know? So, right. Exactly. And then like questioning the heck out of it being like, is that true? Do I really have to go to art school to be a professional, capable, great earning artist? Is that true? If so, why? (laughs) And journaling out just kind of brain dumping all of the excuses that you come up with to hold yourself back from doing what you really want to do. Um, I am just now learning that whole process. So (laughs) like, that's just amazing. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. You want to tell me about how you got started into the course creation and how that is going? Yeah. So one of the biggest lessons I have learned as an entrepreneur is that um, having different streams of income in your business is an, is an important part of your success. So just relying on one thing is, it, it can make it very difficult. So course creation was kind of on my wheel with all my spokes of different um aspects of my business, but I didn't know exactly when that would come about. I had been thinking about it for a couple years now and thinking, well, what is it that I could offer? And I decided that this was the perfect time. This was the right time for me to start to teach other artists how to run a business because I've done it now for I don't know, like whatever. Yeah. 11, 12 years. How much? How long? Yeah. (laughs) Well, according to math. So (laughs) yes, thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Since you, since you got your LLC. So there's that. (laughs) According to math. (laughs) I love that. So So, yeah, it's the right time. Like it, it wouldn't have been the right time for me, you know, five, seven, eight years ago. Um, but now it is. And I thought, okay, this is the perfect time to implement a course that I can pass on, um, the, you know, the, the business legacy that I have built, the things that have worked, the things that haven't worked, the things that really can up level and get artists making money way quicker than what it took me to do. So Yeah, no paving that path. So this is the course is for artists who are looking to make into a business. So this just like fits my audience perfectly. So that was awesome. So Jenny, if people want to find out more about you, your courses, your art, all of those things, do you want to tell people where they can find you? Absolutely. So you can find me at www.artistjennymcgee.com. And on that first link on the website is the Profitable Artist Academy. If you are an artist and need additional support or would like additional support selling your artwork. 